Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Grixis Guild Pact, a multicolor control deck built around the 5 mana artifact Tome of the Guild Pact that says whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card, and it also taps to add one mana of any color, so it helps us ramp and fix our mana. And outside of Tome and Cry of the Carnarium, every card in our deck is multicolored, which means we get to draw a ton of cards with Tome, and it gets out of hand very quickly. So let's take a look at our entire deck list here. Starting out with the one drops, which is Carnival, the Carnival half of Carnival Carnage, dealing one damage to a creature or planeswalker and one damage to that permanence controller. So a nice way to remove early Lanor Elves, creatures out of the mono blue deck, some of the creatures out of mono red, including Runaway Steamkin. So just dealing one point of damage is enough to kill a lot of the important early creatures in the format, which makes Carnival a pretty nice early play. And then of course if you're playing against a control deck where you don't need to use Carnival as removal, you get access to Carnage at 4 mana, making the opponent discard 2 cards and deal 3 damage to that opponent as well, which is a pretty nice card in a control matchup. Then at 2 mana we've got another split card in Bedag Bedazzle. So for 2 black and red hybrid mana we get to give target creature plus 3 minus 3 until end of turn. So if it has 3 or less toughness it dies on the spot. Do have to be a little bit careful not to play this in the opponent's turn if they're potentially running pump spells. Since then you might end up pumping the opponent's creature even more but uh, it does basically act as a 3 damage removal spell for the most part, and it also has a little bit of upside in that sometimes you target your own Nickel Bolas, which has 4 toughness, so it survives the plus 3 minus 3, and you get to deal 3 additional damage, essentially turning this into a lightning strike to the opponent's face, which can definitely come up in a racing situation. And then if you're playing against the control deck, you get access to Bedazzle for 6 mana, which is an instant, destroying target a non-basic land, and it also deals 2 damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So Bedazzle is a great effect to have in the control mirror matches, where Bedak is not going to be a very useful card, but Bedazzle can still destroy a transformed Search for Ascanta, and a transformed Search for Ascanta is one of the key cards in the mirror match, so being able to destroy that, or at least force the opponent to use a counter spell on your otherwise dead removal spell, is uh, great to have access to. And even without a transformed search for Ascanta, destroying a land is still a nice ability in a control mirror, since it often boils down to who can keep up more mana and more counterspells. And then we also have the full four copies of Thought Erasure, letting us discard a non-land card from the opponent's hand, and letting us surveil one, setting up our future draw steps. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Bedevil, destroying target artifact, creature or planeswalker at instant speed, so pretty versatile card, although the double black in the mana cost is not always the easiest. And then we also have the full four copies of Ionize as our counter spell, countering target spell and dealing 2 damage to that spell's controller. We would much rather gain life than dealing damage to the opponent as a control deck, but uh, since we're playing Grixis instead of Esper, we don't get access to life gain counter spells. And then we also have two copies of Cry of the Carnarium as a sweeper, giving everything minus 2 minus 2 and exiling all creatures that die this turn as a way to catch back up if we're facing the go-wide aggro decks, since there's no great multicolor sweeper effects in the Grixis Scholar combinations, and I think Cry is a little bit better than Ritual of Soot right now. And then at 4 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Nickel Bolas the Ravager, which is a great card. 4-4 four, four Flyer makes the opponent discard and then can transform into Nickel Bolas the Arisen, which will usually win the game. And then we also have two copies of Ajora, Weatherlight Captain, 4 mana for a 3-3 legendary creature that says whenever we cast a historic spell, draw a card. And historic spells include artifacts, legendaries, both creatures and planeswalkers, and sagas. No sagas in this deck, even though we could play the Eldest Reborn if we wanted to, but it's not a multicolor card for Tome. We do have some artifacts with Tome, of course. We've got some legendaries with Jora itself, could always play a second copy just to draw a card. We've got our four copies of Nicol Bolas as a legendary creature, two copies of Ral as a legendary planeswalker, and then two copies of niv as another legendary creature. So quite a few historic spells for Jora to draw extra cards with, and it's just a nice spicy addition. Then at 5 mana, of course, we've got our three copies of Tome of the Guild Pact. It's not a May ability, so in some control mirrors, we could risk decking ourselves by just drawing too many cards off of Tome of the Guild Pact, but once we combine that with niv dealing damage whenever we draw a card, we can usually close out the game in time. And then we've got our two copies of Ral is Advice Roy, 5 mana for a 5 loyalty planeswalker, draws us extra cards with the plus 1, kills stuff with the minus 3, and the minus 8 is also game winning. 
And finally we've got two copies of a Nifmizzet Perun, 6 mana for a 5-5 flyer, cannot be countered, so great in control mirrors. And then whenever we draw a card, Nifmizzet deals 1 damage to any target, so also great combo with Tome and Jora. And then also whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, we draw a card, which fuels the other ability as well. So Nifmizzet is excellent in any control mirror match, and can also mow down a lot of smaller creatures. And we also have one copy of Expansion Explosion as a pretty versatile card. Expansion can copy an instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost 4 or less, and we can choose new targets. So we can use this to copy an opposing counter spell, for example, and then Expansion turns into a negate. And Explosion for X double blue and double red deals X damage to any target, and target player draws X cards, which is also a nice finisher. And then the mana base is very straightforward, 26 lands, including all the Grixis colored dual lands as well as one basic mountain and one basic swamp. The basic swamp's a little awkward with Nifmizzet since it doesn't help us cast Nifmizzet, but we always have Tome of the Guild Pact for mana fixing, and we do need double black for Cry and Bedevil. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a hand that could be good against an aggro deck with Bedak into Cry. Uh, we're missing red mana. But we only need a single rat to be able to operate here, and with 26 lands we should be able to draw some lands on the draw here, so we'll try it. Turn one island into Banthic Biomancer, so could be a Merfolk deck, in which case our removal spells are going to be pretty strong. And indeed we see green mana. So we'll have to wait and see here whether or not we can afford to wait on this bedank or if we're forced to cast it right away. If they threaten to grow a merfolk above 3 toughness we'll have to bedank, otherwise we can just cry next turn. Silver guild, that's fine. I think we let that resolve. If they play another Banthic Biomancer and grow one of their creatures up to a 3-3, then we'll have to take action. So we'll see where they put the counter here. Alright, on the deep root itself. So now we'll bedeck. They could have tried to put the counters on the Biomancer to get the loot ability to draw cards and discard. But they wanted to try and get their deep root elite out of Crown of the Carnarium range. But as it turns out, we had the two mana removal as well. And we do have the red mana lined up for Nicol Bolas and Ionize and Ral. Another Silver Gill reveals Kumena Speaker. One of the cards we can potentially struggle with is a resolved Kumena. Because at 4 toughness it does of course dodge Cry and Bedek. Cancel kill it with Bedevil and some of our other answers of course. Alright, so I think we're just gonna jam Nicol Bolas. It's a good blocker. Makes them discard. And next turn we can maybe play a Ral and Minus, or we can play Tome first, depends what uh, our opponent does here. Alright, there's Kumena. So we definitely still have a game. Don't think Nicol Bolas is attacking, our opponent can draw a card with Kumena's ability here, tapping three untapped Merfolk. So Ral right now only deals two damage, so not enough to take out Kumena. So we could just Ral plus, and look for an answer, or we could play Tome. I think we need to roll plus here. Roll plus one also helps us put more instant and sorcery in the graveyard. Always nice to get out of the lab. Opponent's gonna draw a card. <laughs> and thought are sure. I kind of don't mind drawing the land here. Since then, let's say we draw a 2 mana interactive spell or 1 mana interactive spell, we could go Tome into one of those cards right away. And at the very least it lets us keep up double Ionize. And putting the Thought Erasure in the graveyard helps us fuel Ral. So I think I'm fine drawing the land here instead. And then no attacks with Nicol Bolas can help us protect our Planeswalker. And Merfolk Mistbinder, hopefully not a second one. Jade Bear, alright, that's pretty good. So they can get one creature up to four power potentially. And they also have five Merfolk in place, so they could tap all five if they wanted to. So opponent had some good draws to follow up 
from the sweeper effect. If we can get rid of Kumena, then we're in pretty good shape. They're just going to make Kumena unblockable, send Silvergill and Kumena at Ral. I think I would like to keep Ral around, although Nicol Bolas could also transform and kill Kumena, of course. Although that might be too slow. I think we just trade for the Silvergill, and then um, we get another Ral activation. All right, another Nicol Bolas was a good draw. So we've got three instances of sorcery in the graveyard. So I don't actually hate just minusing on the Merfolk Mistbinder here with Ral. And then we can play another Nicol Bolas. Although the discard isn't too relevant. So I guess we could also just take a turn off casting Tome or just keep up Ionize. So this is a pretty interesting spot. If we plus then we still need to find an answer for the Mistbinder. We could get lucky and draw like a Bedeck. I think I just want to minimize the damage at the moment, so I'm just going to kill the Mistbinder. And then I think I'm going to play the Tome, since we want to get our card draw engine online again, and play tap Steam Vents. And our opponent will have to decide whether they want to draw more cards or if they want to go on the beatdown plan. And then Nicol Bolas lines up pretty well as a blocker next turn. And we get to keep up Ionize as well. Ponen decides to draw some cards instead. Build up a bigger board. Finds a Kumena speaker. Alright, let's play Nicol Bolas draw card. Another Nicol Bolas is pretty decent. And next turn we could also just transform Nicol Bolas and then deal 10 damage to a creature. So... I think we're doing okay. And yeah, opponent just packs it up. We were going to be able to counter their next two plays and draw cards at the same time. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. So we've got a turn to Bedak as early removal and then Jora as our card draw engine. So we'll lead with a timed Blood Crypt. And Badek is very easy to cast on turn 2 reliably, thanks to the hybrid mana symbols. So I've got a turn 2 Badek, turn 3 Ionize, turn 4 Jora. Up against the blue-green, turn 2 search for Ascanta. Alright, so looks like we're probably going to be using Bedazzle this game instead of Badek. Could still keep up Badek just in case, but I doubt our opponent's going to be playing a creature next turn. So we'll just play a tap land so we don't have to pay the life. Our hand's not bad for a control matchup. I guess we could have still played an untapped plan in case we needed to expansion, copy something. But at 3 mana it's not too likely. At 4 of course we can expect something like a Chemister's Insight. Opponent with a Growth Spiral. We could copy it with expansion. But that won't let us keep up Ionize and I do want to counter a potential Wilderness Reclamation. So we'll let that resolve. Opponent is just on a teamer reclamation deck here, it looks like. Which could be a, a tough matchup since, of course, the deck is designed to beat up on Esper control. We don't really want to tap out for Jora, since otherwise they can punish us with counterspell into reclamation. So we'll just uh, play a land, say go. Chemisters will have to let resolve. It's not a card we can afford to find over. If our opponent plays an Evmizit, next turn we're also in trouble. Since we don't have a great answer to that. No triple red at the moment. Alright, let's untap. And yeah, we can't really afford to do much here. Although, Thought Erasure was a good draw. So we can Thought Erasure with Ionize backup. If our opponent expansions our Thought Erasure, what do we do? I mean, I guess we fight over it and hope they don't have too many relevant cards or counter spells left. So let's uh, go for it. Opponent is indeed copying it with expansion. Don't think this is going to work, but... Uh, gotta give it a shot. Opponent with a devious cover-up on our Thought Erasure, so... They want to protect whatever's left in their hand, which probably includes an Evmizits, is my guess. They do transform Ascanta, we can Bedanzel Ascanta at instant speed as well. 
but not before they activate it at least once. So, not liking our chances against the Team of Reclamation. I think the Esper Control matchup is fine, but the Team of Reclamation matchup is a little bit more difficult. Because against Esper Control they have way more dead cards than we have against them, considering that most of our removal are split cards with Badag Bedazzle and Carnival Carnage. Speak of the Devil. Opponent took two damage there, probably has another Growth Spiral, hopefully no negate. Think we just got a main phase Bedazzle the Ascanta here. And then we can deal two damage to Ral as well, prevent that from ultimating. Could be Syncopate for one, I suppose. But, uh, don't have the mana to play around it. Alright, just a Growth Spiral, luckily. So I'll Skanta down. Ral's a bit further away from ultimating. Alright, let's see if they have a niv it here. Yep, there's Niv Mizzet. Yeah, Resolve Niv Mizzet is going to be hard to beat. This is one of those cards that we have to try and take away with the Thought Erasure. Of course, we can play Jora without letting them draw extra cards. Same with Tome. I guess we'll lead with Tome. And then play the Stabbed for now. Still have Expansion up. Could try and explosion for five at some point. Which could happen if we draw land. The search for the unknown. That's real science. Or we have to draw our own if miss it and then try and uh, outdraw them somehow. Do have Bedevil that could answer if miss it as well. They could also have counterspell backup by now. And it's gonna be an explosion. Which resolves, and uh, we can copy that with expansion. And then if Mizzet deals some more damage. We might not be dead right now, but we're pretty dead next turn. Yeah, the best way to win this matchup is either a well timed Thought Erasure taking away Niv Mizzet or Reclamation, drawing our own Niv Mizzet before they do, or not having them ramp early so we don't have to fear the turn 3 Reclamation. Alright, um. So what's our plan here? We're at 5. We did not draw the land, so we can't Explosion and if miss it for 5 here. So we pretty much need to draw Bedevil as an answer to and if miss it. So I guess that means we'll play Jora and Hope. Could also cast Carnival for 1 mana here. And then uh, try and draw with Tome. Nicol Bolas could technically chum block Niv Mizzet, although I guess Ral could just minus and kill it. So that doesn't work. Yeah, I think we just need to cycle this carnival. Opponent gets to draw a card with Niv. We get to draw a card with Tome. Thought Erasure is not going to do it. Alright, let's see what's up. Bonus got a Growth Spiral. So yeah, they might just burn us out here. And syncopate with another damage from Nivmizit. Alright, that's gonna do it. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. With an interesting opening hand, we are missing black mana, so we're pretty far from casting Bedevil. Do have a turn 3 Ionize with a Tome coming up. No removal spells at the moment. I don't think this hand is good enough. Just don't have any ways to deal with early creatures. 
Could be okay in like a control mirror, but we don't know what we're up against. Let's go to six. This is a much better six. So we'll keep, and I think we need to keep a land on top. Like, we're definitely going to need a fourth land, and then we can use the Surveil from Thought Erasure to uh, draw us into some action. Turn one Firebrand, alright. So this might be a draw where we want to wait on casting Bedek and instead just go for the Cry of the Carnarium. Alright, their hand has a Steamkin, which presumably they play next turn, which we can sweep up with Cry. So I think we take probably the Chain Whirler. We could take one of the Burn Spells, since we have Bedek for Chain Whirler, but they're gonna draw more creatures at some point. And then now I can bottom the land and look for something like a Nicol Bolas, which is pretty good against Red. Alright, another Bedek. Let's take a look at their follow-up. Another Steamkin, which we can Bedek into Firebrand. Alright. Ionize could be good at maybe countering something like an Experimental Frenzy. Opponent has land 4, so we're at a relatively healthy life total, all things considered. Jura is just gonna die to the Lightning Strike, so it's not uh, the best use of our mana here, but uh, at least we're not taking 3. We could Bedak the Firebrand first, but I think we want to save Bedak for a higher impact creature. So I guess we'll just run out Jura here. They could also sack Firebrand and Shock, but it makes more sense for them to just use a Lightning Strike and keep the creature in play. So just trading one for one here. That's why four toughness on Nicol Bolas is so huge in this matchup, because they have to use at least two cards to get rid of it. Alright, opponent says go. Not gonna take two to keep up both spells here. Just pass with Bedek and Ionize up. At some point we'll maybe Bedek the Firebrand, but not quite yet. And if Mizzet is also great against Red, since it closes out the game very quickly. Yeah, we'll we'll counter the draw two here. Alright, Bedazzle, more removal. So Bedazzle doesn't come up against Red, since they only have basic lands. So we might as well Bedek the Firebrand and keep Bedazzle. Although I guess that's debatable too, since it's not like our opponent has any artifacts or planeswalkers we worry about. And uh, Bedek is more mana efficient than Bedevil, so we probably actually should have cast Bedevil instead of Bedek. As it turns out, it's not going to matter since we're just going to kill both. And hope they don't have a Goblin Chain Whirler left over here. Alright, Thought Erasure can have a look. And they're probably just gonna burn our face a bunch. Alright, never mind, they could only cast one of the two burn spells, so we got some value. But Devil could be okay if they draw another creature next, but we really need to draw one of our card draw engines or one of our uh, threats here, so... Don't think we can afford to keep a removal spell on top. Just a land from our opponent, Ionize. Isn't bad. Alright. So we're at 11 life, our opponent is flooding out a bit, and we've got double counterspell. Seems worth a counterspell. Alright, another Bedag Bedazzle. So we're just waiting for a Ral, a niv -Mizzet. Even a Jora would be okay. Nicol Bolas. Or a Tome to start drawing more cards. Alright, well, we're both drawing a lot of lands. There we go. Tome with Ionized backup. And now we should be able to close out the game pretty quickly. 
Light up the stage, we'll counter. Counter your spell, draw a card, deal 2 damage. Not bad. Could bedazzle our own land. Didn't think I'm into that. Ooh, nice. A big fat expansion explosion. I guess we'll main phase it. Doesn't really matter. So this is for six. Rekindling Phoenix. And a concession. Alright, awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand is pretty slow. It is powerful once it gets going. But no early plays whatsoever. Didn't think we can uh, keep this. Alright, this is better. And Steam Vents is close. Like, we do need to hit our land drops, but we also need to find some action. We get double surveil and thought erasure. For now, I think we'll bottom it. Alright, Jora's action, so now we can dig for a fourth land if we want to. Get Spell Pierce up against Mono Blue. Let's uh, Thought Erasure again. This one resolves, and our opponent's hand is Tempest Gin, dive down Essence Capture. So Essence Capture can counter Jora, sadly. But if we take the capture and leave them with Jin, they'll wait until turn 4 to Jin with dive down backup to counteract something like a Bedevil, and then we're gonna have a hard time beating this Jin. So probably gotta take the Jin. Bottom the land. And play Blood Crypt for now. Alright, opponent runs out Storm Tamer. So, they can put the counter from the Assassin's Capture on the Storm Tamer now, too. So, we could play it patiently and not play out Jora right now. And instead, keep up the Devil end of turn. Maybe force something and then try and resolve Jora. I think that's okay. Like, running face first into an Assassin's Capture doesn't seem necessary. We can take one, see what they play, and then probably bedevil the Storm Tamer end of turn. Ooh, Tempest Gin. Well, I guess uh, we're bedeviling that. They're gonna use Dive Down, presumably, and then we gotta hope to find another answer soon. On the bright side, we get to resolve Jora. So our best bet is trying to sneak through a Nicol Bolas just to block the Tempest Gin, but with Assassin's Capture in their hand that's going to be difficult. And yeah, there's Nicol Bolas, so we'll cast a Nicol Bolas before attacking in case they have a Merfolk Trickster tapping down Jura, because then we would lose the ability to draw a card. We still draw the card even though Nicol Bolas gets countered here, but uh, Assassin's Capture also means Tempest Gin could grow up to 5 toughness, so future Nicol Bolas can't actually trade. Cry gets rid of the Storm Tamer, so if we draw another spot removal spell for the Jin, we could get to it. But it's gonna be difficult here if our opponent has more counter spells in hand. Shard of course, draw two. Storm Tamer we don't care about. So we're just dead here to the Tempest Jin. Uh, we can play Tome Draw card, gives us two mana left, that's not enough to draw anything relevant in the spot. We can cry away the Storm Tamers, but Tempest Gin is lethal by itself. Let's see if they had a Counterspell left. It looks like they do as well. Wizard's Retort, alright, so we're never gonna win this game then. Even if we still had a answer to the Gin. Well, Tempest Gin always hits pretty hard, and if they can back it up with uh, Storm Tamers and Dive Towns, it's hard to beat. Had we run Jora into the Essence Capture, then there's a chance 
The Nicol Bolas resolves, and we have a creature that can trade for the Tempest Gin. Of course, we didn't know we were gonna draw Nicol Bolas. Otherwise, we might have played that slightly differently and then run Jora into the counterspell. So we have Nicol Bolas to trade for the Tempest Gin. And then uh, we might have been able to uh, win a long game. So definitely an interesting decision there. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. A little awkward with all the check lands that all come into play tapped, but we're on the play, so it's not as bad as being on the draw. Turn one planes into healer socks, so mono white, aggro, and cry is about the best draw we can hope for in the matchup, so hopefully that lines up well here. Hunted Witness into Legion's Landing. Probably should have actually played our Drowned Catacomb instead of our Sulphur Falls in case we pick up our one basic Mountain or Esteem Vents, so we could have cast Cry before the Legion's Landing flips. But we also wanted to keep up the option of keeping up Ionize. Landing makes us want to cast a Cry right now, whereas we might want to wait in other circumstances. Alright, well... And let's uh, say go. See if our opponent moves straight to combats. And then we can always decide to bedag before they get to attack. Alright, opponent moves to combats. Yeah, I don't think we want to give them a transformed legion's landing. So, let's uh, bedag the hawk here. And hope they play something that dies to cry, like a Tithe Taker, perfect. Alright, so didn't get punished too badly. And now our late game cards can hopefully take over. Alright, so we can roll minus. Prevent the landing from flipping next turn, play Nicol Bolas. We could play Bolas right now. But uh, I just don't want them to flip the landing if we can avoid it. And unless they've got a Banalish Marshal or Unbreakable Formation, Ral should be safe. Alright. With Unbreakable Formation, they would have also been able to attack past Nicol Bolas without throwing away a creature. So, could play it slow now and play a Tome first. We're still at 14. Don't hit it. Play Tome, next turn play Nicol Bolas with Ionize backup. Worst case scenario is Banalish Marshal here, I guess. Alright, and Chani is also not great for us. But we might be able to beat it. Minus is on Aspirants. So let's see if they're willing to throw away some creatures to flip the landing. Flip landing is going to be tricky to beat, but not impossible. We've got an Evmizid that can shoot down one toughness creatures. Alright, fully grown Stumphorn Sentry. Shiny pluses. Tax for five, we'll take it. And a Jora to draw. And there's Nif. I think we attack a Jani here. If they block, then the flyer is not lethal with a Jani plus. And if a Jani dies, they only have five. And then we have to hope that Niv Mizzet can uh, take over the game here. The problem with attacking a Jani is they let them die, they attack us for five in the air. We go to one, and then we have to draw a cheap removal spell alongside Niv Mizzet, which is not too likely. So I guess we'll stay back. They might flip the landings this turn as well. Alright, just sentry attacking. I think I'm fine double blocking. They kill Nicol Bolas. 
But then next turn we get to play Niv Mizzet, which blocks one of the flyers. And draws a card with Jorah as well. Hoping to cast Ionize here. Alright, they're just gonna get back the Snowporn, makes sense. And convoke a Loxodon. Alright, get to counter that. But Dak was a great draw. And now we get to play Niv with Badak backup. Carnival as well. Alright, so how do we want to do this? We can Badak the Aspirants. And then... I guess we'll take out the Hawk. And yeah, now we're just going off. We even have the untapped land without having to pay life. To play Carnival, which also kills a Jani. Jora could attack it. And there we go. Awesome. So it's pretty close there. But uh, in the end, we were able to stabilize and defeat the White Weenies. All right, that's going to do it for today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.